Welcome back everyone, Energy Fabricator here. I picked up this Decade Resistance box a few weeks ago down at the scrapyard and I, it was looking a bit worse for wear when I picked it up. It was fairly dirty, the knobs were either broken or missing. I think this one here was missing, this one was smashed and the only thing left on this knob was the plastic ring and a grub screw that held the knob in place. Now the original knobs were much larger, they were about twice the diameter of these knobs. But these were the only knobs that I had in my parts box that actually fit onto these, these shafts here. What I want to do now is actually take this thing apart, have a look inside, and then we might give it a bit of a test run, make sure it all works, and um, it's a nice little piece of kit to add to the collection. Now, if I was going to buy something like this, I'd probably want something with like six or seven decades. Um, so this thing here will only go up to 1110 ohms or 1.11k ohms. We've got the terminals here and on the side here you can see that there's an aluminium earth terminal for the um, housing here, metal housing. This top piece here is just a bit of black plastic. Uh, so I'll start by taking out the screws and um, we'll have a look inside. Okay, so we'll pull off the top panel here and everything hopefully will be just attached to this panel. And there we go. That is pretty funky, pretty old school looking. As you can see the inside of the box is just a bit of folded steel. Uh, but this is where all the magic happens. So there we have it. We've got these solid copper bars here connecting the rotary switches together and as you can see each one just contains wire wound resistors here and they've all been coated with some sort of coating. Now if we have a look at the switching mechanism you can see that it's just a um, spring loaded ball bearing assembly. Now this sort of thing will just last forever. It's got some good tension on it. It's a nice solid switching action. And um, there's nothing wrong with these switches at all. They seem to all work pretty well. And this one on the end here also works pretty well. Now I've had a good look over this thing and it doesn't seem to be any visual damage or any signs of wear and tear. It was all pretty clean inside the box so I'll put it back together and we'll get the multimeter out and give it a bit of a test run. So now I've got my decade resistance box connected to my Fluke 117 True RMS multimeter and we're currently set to read 0 ohms and we're reading 0.1 to 0.2 ohms on the multimeter. So we'll switch that over to 1 ohm and we're reading 1.2, 2 ohms, 2.2, 3 ohms, 4 ohms, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 ohms. So that seems to work fine. We'll switch that back over to zero and start going up in 10. So we've got 10, 20 ohms. 30 ohms, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100 ohms. So we'll get that back over to zero and we'll start going up in hundreds to make sure that this one works. We've got 100 ohms. 200 ohms, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, and 1000 ohms. 
Now let's just select some random resistances and we'll go to 664. Looking good. 897. Pretty spot on. 149. Pretty close. 0.1 of an arm there. Let's go to 886. Now let's go to 942. I'd say this works fine. 462. 594. And 700. And 87. Now I could play with these knobs all day, but it all seems to be working fine as far as I can see. It's accurate enough for the sorts of applications that I'll be using it for. So what I might do is just put it away and it'll be there for when I need it later on down the track. I'm pretty happy that I found this down at the scrapyard with only some minor work required to get it cleaned up and um, in working order. So yeah, pretty happy about that. Thanks for watching.